Hey everyone, welcome back to this Tosca automation playlist and we are talking about the top 10 Tosca best practices. Now this is the last of the best practice, uh, which is the 10th best practice. And before this, we have done almost all the nine best practices. So if you have not watched them, please go ahead and watch them in our playlist. Also, please subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on all the upcoming videos. Now let's talk about this particular best practice. It is the last best practice and also it is the most important best practice because it is going to take care of a lot of other things. It talks about implementing a review process in your project. Now why it is important? Now no matter if you work in a development team or a testing team, every test case which is written by the tester or every code change which is done by a developer goes through some or the other review process. Now there are static code uh, review uh, tools available with the development team. Also, there are senior developers or senior testers who review each other's work, right? And this is done because uh, you need to have uh, another person looking at your work because you might not uh, come across all the different improvements which will be suggested by somebody else looking at your code or uh, looking at your test cases, right? So you might not cover everything in the first instance. So you need to take it through uh, uh, your peer reviews so that you can get the best out of your code or your test case, right? And during this process, uh, they need to follow some best practices. Right, so all the best practices which we have discussed and a lot more. So they will keep an keep an eye on all of these best practices when they are looking at your uh, test cases or your modules, uh, specifically talking about Tosca. Right. Now, what you should do uh, in Tosca is you should implement a robust review process for all the artifacts, no matter if it is a test case, uh, if it is a module. Even you can do it for requirements. Uh, if they are created in your project, they should all go through this particular review process. Also, uh, it should be based on certain approval stages and the four eyes principle. Now, what is the four eyes principle? Right. So this principle is applied in a review process where every change is uh, monitored by two persons or reviewed by two persons right so that's why there are four eyes looking at your code change or uh, any other change right and it needs to go through their approval and their review before um, it is finalized and uh, you can think that okay this is the final version of my code or my test case right so that's the four i uh, check which we should do uh, during this whole review process and it should go through different approval stages, right? Now, let's see what are these approval stages and how you can implement this review process within Tosca So um, The process is pretty simple, right? Uh, mostly you would uh, like to uh, implement the review process for your modules and test cases because here uh, people will uh, make mistakes like um, People might create duplicate modules or uh, they may not be using the right structure or they may, they may be using lots of module attributes. So we have talked about so many best practices around this, right? And you can uh, put together a process where you can review all of this uh, before it is like in the completed stage, right? So the approval stages, uh, they are basically three approval stages. Uh, this is recommended by Tracentis. Obviously, you can put more stages if you like, but uh, the three are the recommended ones. So the first stage should be the inbox stage. So this is where uh, you or somebody else will put or create the modules and start working on those modules, right? So this uh, here, all these modules are currently in progress or in work, right? So they have not been completed. Once you think that you have completed your work, okay? then you can move these modules into the ready for approval stage okay and once it reaches this ready for approval stage then uh, the approver or the reviewer will come here and he will go through this all these modules or test cases right 
And once it thinks that uh, everything is as per the expectations, it is following the best practices, then this will be uh, approved and it will be ready to move into the completed stage. So this completed stage should be your final modules, which should be used in your project. Okay. And once uh, the modules are moved into completed, you can very well delete it from the other folders. Okay. So that you don't create duplicate modules and you maintain the structure and also all the different modules which are flowing through these three approval stages. Right. Now uh, you can put uh, two reviewers so that you can complete the four I check right and they will look at all the modules which are in this particular approval stage and then uh, once they approve it should be moved to completed okay and then um, whatever is moved you can remove it from the other folders same thing can be done for the test cases section okay you can have a completed and a ready for approval and a in work stage or folders and then um, once you start working on it you can keep it in in work then you can move it to ready for approval uh, once it is approved and reviewed then you move it to complete it okay so this will keep a check on all the test cases all the modules which are being created in your project and since it is going through so many checks and reviews you will produce the best or possible test cases or modules which are efficient and which are following the best practices okay the same thing you can do for requirements but requirements um, anyways you will be talking to your business owners or the product owners so there is less chances of uh, making any mistakes in the requirements uh, rather than doing it for modules or test cases because requirements will be either taken care by a particular person or you will probably use a document to create all these requirements but the same approval process can also be followed for requirements okay and even um, execution so execution anyway you will uh, execute your test cases so this i think doesn't require any um, approval or review process but still if you want you can do the same okay so it can be uh, done as i said for each and every artifact you create uh, in your Tosca project. It should go through all the different approval stages. It should be reviewed properly and uh, it should follow the 4i check. Okay, so these are uh, the recommendations by Tricentis and this will make sure that all the best practices which you have been uh, discussing about are being followed in your project. And this way you will make sure your uh, test cases are as efficient or your modules are as efficient as possible and uh, you don't have any performance issues um, you don't have any workspace size issues uh, you don't have a lot of maintenance uh, so your maintenance efforts will go down because of this and there will be an overall review process which will be followed across the team okay so everybody will be following this and then this could be uh, formed into guidelines which can be followed by any new member who is joining the team as well right so that's all for this particular video i hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new today there are lots of other best practices uh, which we haven't discussed here but um, i will leave the links in the description so that you can go through all the best practices and you should follow them when developing any artifacts in your tosca project there are lots more videos coming up in tosca so keep watching uh, out for more videos in our channel and do support us by uh, sharing it across with your team members or your friends. Until we talk again, uh, keep watching and keep learning.